Hey guys, what's going on? So today I want to talk a little bit about the new Bragi OS system. It's uh, the 3.0 version, as they call it, Boss 3.0. And it brings a lot of kind of subtle, you know, enhancements to the current Dash. Uh, it will also be running on the Dash Pro, of course, which is going to be released, uh, I think, almost currently. So should be getting it in the next few weeks, and I'll do a little comparison of the two. But right now I just want to talk a little bit about the firmware updates and how that's changed um, on some of the features that it has. So first, uh, what it does have now is auto activity tracking. So when you put it in your ear and it connects to your phone or whatever, or even if it's not connected to your phone, it will um, essentially start, you tick the box in the app and then it'll auto track your activity. So if you start running, swimming, or cycling, it'll kind of, it's programmed to know that and it will then auto detect that activity. And then I think once you're done, uh, you can manually stop it or it kind of senses after a while. Now I did notice that on the swimming, it had a little bit of trouble picking up the auto tracking, but it did work pretty well uh, for cycling and running as well. One of the things that I'm really glad to see come to the Dash now is the offline activity tracking. So if you watch my comparison of the Dash and the headphone, I'll link that up here. It's uh, kind of a feature that should have been in here because it does have the flash storage to store the data. Uh, now, if you start an activity, say you're in the pool, you obviously don't have your phone with you. Once you start um, or the auto activity tracking starts, starts doing it automatically, um, it can offload your data onto the device and then once you sync back up to the app then it shows you a review of your data and that was kind of a big feature set that was missing because one of the things I use this most for is swimming and I never have my phone with me when I do that so the activity tracking feature was pretty much non-existent for me so good to see them come with that update another cool feature that I think was kind of not really expecting is the 4D menu. You look down, bring it up, you'll hear a slight noise, then you look up again and it makes another noise and then it activates the 4D menu. And then what that, what that does is essentially you can look, um, picture like a virtual menu, there's like four points in front of you, whichever one you look at and then look down, it will select. I did find this pretty practical when biking. It is a uh, it is a nice thing to have because uh, you know you're obviously <laughs> focusing on not crashing. So the only downside I think is that if you have it enabled, if you're in the gym like moving around or I don't know if you're say if you're doing some sort of activity, it will register that like when you look down and look up a lot, it makes that noise. So I think it would be nice if on the first when you look up, if the noise was a little more, more muted so that you wouldn't really notice it until you do the second gesture, look up, then that one could be maybe louder uh, to know that you activated it. But I do find myself sometimes turning it off just because when I, you know, you look down a lot, look up a lot. So it, uh, it does get kind of annoying when you're listening to music and you hear that, that noise keep coming through and just, it's kind of a, a big disturbance. So 40 menu is cool. I think you can use some improvement. Um, it allows you to kind of control your music, you know, pause, play, uh, skip. Um, you can also do the voice assistant, you can activate that, and then you can also enable activity tracking, which is kind of cool. Of the changes to the audio, it does sound a little bit better. I know they have some warmer mids, increased max volume. I don't know that they mentioned it, but I do think they, they decreased the minimum volume, which seems kind of like a weird thing, but on the internal player, when I would uh, sometimes be in a quiet situation, I would be on the lowest setting already, and it was still a little like louder than I would actually want to hear. So <clears throat> that does that's not really an issue anymore. Uh, I'm kind of glad to see that happen um, internally. You know, internally you should have the maximum amount of control when you have the flash storage. The audio transparency was the biggest uh, feature that I've noticed. Um, that they made improvements on. So when you have it in your ear, you swipe forward, turn on audio transparency. Swipe forward again, turn on windshield. The windshield feature 
is really cool if you're biking. It blocks out all the wind and the only downside I think is that when you're going at higher speeds because it's blocking out so much wind noise it ends up cutting out a little bit of the ambient noise and it uh, it is definitely harder to hear like vehicles and such when you are going at speed but then again um, it's better than the alternative of having the wind buffeting noise in your ear I think that when you're at lower speeds as well it doesn't really work as well I think it has to have that consistent kind of wind noise to be able to cut it out well with the software they've implemented in here now uh, that's not a huge issue because when you're going slower the wind noise isn't that bad but um, windshield could definitely use a little bit of work still um, but it has improved since 2.2 so it's a good thing I think the what Bragi says is the natural tone balance implementation of the in the audio transparency does work pretty well it um, people definitely sound a lot clearer now and I think the directional microphones are a little bit better so uh, with 2.2 I actually one of my earbuds was kind of off like it was way lower than the other one 3.0 with the software update it kind of fixed that for me so the auto transparency works really well now and um, I think it's it's at a point where it's it's pretty good like it's very functional to be able to use it used to pick up a lot of kind of sounds that you didn't want and now they've improved that kind of responsiveness I will say though <laughs> If you're biking in traffic and someone honks near you, rest in peace to your ears because that, like, that must have been at least 120, 130 decibels. It amplified the honking sound, um, which was, quite frankly, pretty, like, disturbing because I didn't know what it was at first. It was just so loud. Um, but hopefully, in the future, they can kind of filter out more stuff like that in the in the software code they have. The last. I think kind of update to Bragi OS 3.0 is the call quality. They mentioned that it, uh, I believe it, people just sound better, clearer, a little more natural. I, on 2.2 when I upgraded, I had an issue where I my mic does not work anymore when I make calls. I don't know why. I updated 3.0, nothing changed. So yeah, like I mentioned, you know, there's going to be some cool other features that are coming, like I translate, um, more integration with um, hopefully IBM Watson coming up soon. And I will be reviewing the Dash Pro and comparing it to the regular Dash. Um, they should be arriving in the next few weeks. So yeah, stay tuned if you want to check that video out. Um, I'll try to go as in-depth as I can. If you have anything you specifically you want to see uh, in that comparison, let me know in the comments and I'll try to do that. But um, yeah, stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.